Hello and welcome. I'm here today to talk to you about the tenant-to-tenant -tenant migration possibilities we have using coexistence with the Migration Wiz tool from BitTitan. If you've used the Migration Wiz tool previously, you'd be aware that we can handle a lot of different workloads, from the Microsoft Office 365 tenant-to-tenant, -tenant, but also the OneDrive, the SharePoint migrations from Google Drive. We can handle personal archives, we can configure Outlook profiles, offer the option to have hybrid exchange management in there, public folders, and of course, Microsoft Teams. What I'm interested today, though, is to talk about different domain coexistence when we have things like mergers, acquisitions, and divestitures, where migrations might take a considerable amount of time to run. We can't do a big bang approach over a weekend, perhaps. We have to have coexistence so that mail flow and things can flow between the two tenants whilst the, the migration is occurring. So I just want to show you how we might go about doing that and, and the tools that we can offer to make that a little bit simpler for you. So let me jump straight in with a demonstration from the Migration with console about how we go about doing that. Let's have a look at our source tenant then. For the ease of demonstration, obviously I've got a very small and cut down version of this. However, this could easily be thousands of users. So what we'd do is we would set up a group for the migration and one of the nice things we can do now is scope based on the group membership. So we don't have to take everybody over in terms of cumbersome CSV files and other imports. We can put everybody that we want to migrate into a mail enabled security group here. You can see here called migration group one. And I've just identified four people that I do want to migrate. So let's go ahead and start the migration with project and see what that looks like when we bring these people in. On the main screen here, we just create a new project. And this is like any other migration project with migration with. We'd go in here and set our parameters up. I would choose the custom, which I've already got set up here. And also see, we'd pick out the, the source endpoint and also the destination endpoint. And we've gone through that quite quickly because that is very similar to any other project that you would have set up. Now, the interesting part comes when we start to do the tenant to tenant coexistence. And here is where I set that up and tick this box and into confirm because we are going to be making changes at the target tenant level. We need to confirm we're allowed to do that. So the required components here are that we do put in the source name and also the destination name for the vanity domains. This is important when we're setting up coexistence. But you can see now, if you've done one of these projects previously, we've got quite a few new options involved here. So I'll just run through very quickly what they are. And you can see here that first of all, the scope mailbox discovery. If we leave that unchecked, it's going to bring in everybody from the source tenant, which is not always what we want to do. I'm going to be choosing the group that we had selected previously. I can choose what we're going to bring over in terms of distribution lists and the likes, same as we have done previously. But the options on the right here are new. So we get the option now to say, do you want to create the mail user objects in the target tenant, yes or no? We may have it configured with Azure AD Connect. You may not want to create the mail user objects, so you have the option to uh, create them or not. Um, likewise, if you don't, you can put an SMT folder on the target mailboxes back to the source. We will do some um, smart matching, as you can see there, to perform that coexistence task. The next options are around whether you want to have us automatically convert the mail user to a mailbox during that pre-stage process. Obviously, to do a pre-stage, a mailbox must be live, and that's important. So you can either do that yourself on the other end, or we can do that for you. And likewise, we can apply a license automatically as well if you'd like us to do that. Uh, lastly, post-migration options, we will place a forwarder on the source mailbox and obviously remove the forwarder from the, the target as, as well. Or we can leave the forwarder on the target mailbox, your choice on how you'd like that to proceed. From that point, we'll just save that project and that will now go ahead and do the search inside this uh, mail-enabled security group and grab those objects from the source tenant, what it's going to do is it's going to create those mail user objects in the target tenant automatically for us and apply that coexistence. So any mail that goes into those is going to automatically be forwarded back to the uh, source tenant. When the project gets created, then you can see that our four people out of that security group have now turned up inside the migration with product. So we can go ahead and migrate them now. 
What I would like to show you though is how those people turn up inside the target tenant. And you can see here that from the active user screen, you can see they have appeared here. Now they've appeared as cloud objects and they are unlicensed because they've come in as mail user objects. They're not mail contacts, they're not contact entries. Um, although a mail user item does show up, as you can see, uh, not in this contact page, but you go to the Exchange Admin Center and have a look at this contact page you will see all four of them. So that means that any mail that comes in for their new address, the calljetengines.com address for say Ethel here, will hit this tenant and bounce straight back across to the cloudmigration.online. And this is the domain that we specified in the source domain in the project setup. So that's where it gets that item from. So it means we don't have to set up anything special in the mail flow or any connectors or anything because it's just using the standard vanity domains and it will use normal MX records to transmit that mail backwards and forwards between those two tenants. So I'm going to go ahead now and start a pre-migration for this particular user. I'm just picking out one of these users in here and I'm just put the standard items in here, start that migration off. And what it's going to do in the background is because we set the items up inside the project setup, it's going to convert that mail user object to a mailbox. It's going to license it and set it up as a true mailbox effectively, and then start migrating that data across into it. So we'll give that a, a few seconds, come back and see what that looks like. With the pre-migration completed, you can see that what's happened now is that this mailbox has been converted to a true mailbox. It has been licensed. Let's have a quick look in the other tenant, see what that looks like. And you can see here that user is, they do have a license attached to them. If we have a look inside the admin center, you can see the contact record is gone and that they do have you can see a live mailbox here with that email address. Now I just want to just jump into PowerShell just quickly and show you that if we do a get mailbox here, you can see that he's listed. Now, if we do a quick get mailbox with specifically this person and look at the forwarding properties. So I'm just gonna have a look at this. You'll see that it has a forwarding address of the cloud migration online. So the mailbox is still, even though it's live and it is usable, it's still forwarding mail back to the old uh, source tenant because it's not uh, a true migration yet. It, it hasn't gone through the full migration task. So what you would need to do here is obviously to complete the migration, go back to the migration with console. We'll have this one selected again, and we'll do start and do a full migration. Uh, once that's done, I'll just kick that off now. We'll come back to that and see what it looks like on the source and target tenant. That process is now done. So let's just jump back into our PowerShell window and have a look at that account. So we run exactly the same command again and see what's changed. And there we go. You can see that the forwarding address has now been removed from that account. It's gone through its full migration. It is now live on that uh, new target tenant. Let's now just quickly switch over to the other PowerShell window I have here. And let's have a look at the same account. As you can see here, we are looking at the cloudmigration.online tenant. And let's have a look at that same account on this side. And you can see that there is now a forwarding address on that to the target tenant. So effectively, the situation has been reversed on that. So really, we consider this particular one for this account done. And the correct distance model is now in place in reverse for him. Thank you for watching. Very nice to have you on board for this. For some further reading, I'll ask you to check out the Help Center. We have some uh, detailed descriptions of exactly how things work and also a section on the Azure AD Connect and how that would integrate into a coexistence system on the target. Um, obviously, the web page and the blog as well, check those out. But essentially, what we would like you to do is start migrating today. Just visit the bittitan.com website and have an awesome day. Thank you.